Good morning. The topic that I'm going to discuss today is the Man Whitney U test or the Wilcoxon Ranksum test. This is a popular non parametric test to compare outcomes between two independent groups. This test is sometimes called the Man Whitney Wilcoxon test or the Wilcoxon Ranksum test that is used to test whether two samples are likely to derive from the same population. Some investigators interpret this test as comparing the medians between the two populations. Recall that the parametric test compares the means mu1 is equal to mu2 between independent groups. The null and two-sided research hypothesis for the non-parametric test are stated as follows. For the null hypothesis, the two populations are equal versus the alternate hypothesis that the two populations are not equal. This test is often performed as the two-sided test and thus the research hypothesis indicates that the populations are not equal as opposed to specifying directionality. A one-sided research hypothesis is used if interest lies in detecting a positive or negative shift in one population as compared to the other. The procedure for the test involves pulling the observations from the two samples into one combined sample keeping track of which sample observation comes from and then ranking lowest to highest from 1 to N1 plus N2, respectively. The test statistic for the Mann-Whitney U test is denoted by U and is the smaller of U1 and U2 defined below. We have there u1 is equal to n1 times n2 plus n1 times n1 plus n1 divided by 2 minus r1. For u2, that is equal to n1 times n2 plus n1 times n2 plus 1 divided by 2 minus r2. For our example problem, a new approach to prenatal care is proposed for pregnant women living in a rural community. The new program involves in-home visits during the course of pregnancy in addition to the usual or regularly scheduled visits. A pilot randomized trial with 15 pregnant women is designed to evaluate whether women who participate in the program deliver healthier babies than women receiving usual care. The outcome is the APGAR score measured 5 minutes after birth. Recall that APGAR scores range from 0 to 10 with scores of 7 or higher considered normal or healthy. 4 to 6 low and 0 to 3 critically low. The data are shown below. We have here the data for usual care and for the new program. For our problem statement, is there a statistical evidence of difference in APGAR scores in women receiving the new and enhanced versus usual prenatal care? For our hypothesis, for the null, the two populations are equal. For our alternate, the two populations are not equal. For the level of significance, we are going to test this at alpha is equal to 0 0.05. We have there our N1 is equal to 8 and our N2 is equal to 7. And then, for our tabular value of u, we have there 10. 
For the statistic, we will be using Man Whitney U test. For our computation, we have here our data for the usual care and the new program. We need to arrange this from smallest to largest. Okay? And then we need to rank the values. And then, of course, we need to get the sum of rank 1 and the sum of rank 2. Remember, our rank 1 is for the usual care and rank 2 is for our new program. Okay, so using the formula. For u1 is equal to n1 times n2 plus n1 times n1 plus 1 divided by 2 minus r1. We have there 8 times 7 plus 8 times 9 divided by 2 minus 45.5 that is equal to 46.5. For u2, we have there n1 times n2 plus n1 times n2 plus 1 divided by 2 minus r2 is equal to 8 times 7 plus 7 times 8 over 2 minus 74.5 that is equal to 9.5. Thus, the test statistic is u is equal to 9.5 since it is the smaller value. For the decision rule, the appropriate critical value can be found in the table. So, to determine the appropriate critical value, we need the sample sizes of n1 is equal to 8 and n2 is equal to 7. And our two-sided level of significance, that is alpha, is equal to 0 0.05. The critical value for this test with n1 is equal to 8 and n2 is equal to 7 and alpha is equal to 0 0.05 is 10. And the decision rule is as follows. Reject the null hypothesis if u is less than 10. So for our conclusion, we reject the null hypothesis because 9.5 is less than 10. We have statistically significant evidence at alpha is equal to 0 0.05 to show that the populations of APGAR scores are not equal in women receiving usual prenatal care as compared to the new program of prenatal care. Another example is of the 18 selected patients who had advanced stage of leukemia, 10 were treated with a new serum and 8 were not. The survival time in years was reckoned from the time the experiment was conducted. Use alpha is equal to 0 0.05 to test whether the serum is effective. Consider the following data. So we have here the values or the data from patients with treatment and from patients without treatment. So for our problem statement, is there a statistical evidence of difference in the survival time of patients treated with the new serum versus those who were not. For our hypothesis, for the null, the survival time are equal. For the alternate hypothesis, the survival time are not equal. So for the level of significance, we have there alpha is equal to 0 0.05. For our N1, we have there 10 and N2 is equal to 8. So our U is equal to 17. This is our tabular value. Again, for the statistic, we will be using the Mann-Whitney U-test. So here, we have combined our data for with treatment and without treatment. Then, rank the observations from the lowest value to the highest value of both groups. Then after ranking, we assign the rank to the respective observations. And then, we have added the ranks of group 1 and then added the ranks of group 2. 
Okay, then again, we use the formula. For U1, we have 5. And for U2, we have there 75. So again, for the decision rule, select the smaller value from U1 and U2. If the U computed value is lesser than or equal to the tabular value, this confirm the null hypothesis. For our conclusion, since the U1 computed value of 5 is less than the tabular value of 17 at 0 0.05 level of significance with N1 is equal to 10 and N2 is equal to 8 degrees of freedom, the null hypothesis is disconfirmed in favor of the research hypothesis that there is a significant difference in the survival time. This means that the new serum is effective.